I was in Patagonia. And after several days, I got really sick in the mountains and collapsed. I developed what's called cardiogenic shock. My heart was only working at about 10% of the normal efficiency. My name is uh, Robert Montgomery, and I'm the director of the uh, NYU Langone Transplant Institute in New York. My kids always say, Dad, you know, the, the one thing that we, we think is really great about what you've done is you're in the Guinness Book of World Records for the, having done the most kidney transplants in one day. Ironically, the recipient of a heart transplant. And I've been involved in um, throughout my career in a, a lot of innovations that actually ended up saving my life. So right now there are about 120,000 um, people who are waiting for organs. This year we'll do about 36,000 transplants, so if you do the math, it's a long wait to get an organ. The fact is that 40% of those people will not make it. I was born with a, a disease called dilated cardiomyopathy, and it's due to a mutation that causes the muscle of the heart to deteriorate and also has a tendency to cause um, sudden deaths. I actually was too unstable to be airlifted out of Argentina for um, about three weeks. It took 24 hours. A jet um, stopping in various locations through Central America to get me back to NYU and then within a few days they were able to take the tube out and up kind of. I had to actually learn how to walk and talk and eat and drink. You know, I was very helpless when I emerged from this coma. It took several months for me to um, recover from the Patagonia episode and then I was out with my family um, at a Broadway show, and basically my heart stopped. So I had prolonged CPR, broke ribs, broke my spine. Then finally they were able to um, shock my heart back. We have such a scarcity of um, organs that I still wasn't really considered a candidate for a heart transplant at that point. Almost exactly a year after Patagonia, I was in Italy. I fell onto um, a stone floor and split my head open and stopped breathing. Heart essentially stopped. I woke up and then this happened another three times after that over about a, a four hour period. They took me to this small hospital. There was a priest there who gave me the last rites. They stabilized the situation, but I knew now that it was time to get a heart transplant. We got on a, um, an airplane and flew back, and I met the team that I, you know, basically had hired at NYU, and they admitted me to the ICU to wait for a heart. So now we're in the middle of the opioid epidemic. We have, you know, all these people dying um, from drug overdoses, and if there's any silver lining to that horrific situation, it's that suddenly there were a lot of organs that became available for transplantation. But unfortunately, 25% of those organs were from donors who were infected with hepatitis C. And so those organs were being discarded, half of them. We started talking about using those organs in patients who were negative for hepatitis C and then treating them with this new class of drugs that looked like they would cure hepatitis C up to a rate of 98, 99%. And I was actually the 14th subject in that trial. I had to wait about two and a half weeks um, in the uh, intensive care unit. And I got a phone call and it was the heart surgeon. And he said, it was as if you incarnated your donor because this was a young donor who um, had died of a um, heroin overdose um, who had hepatitis C. The operation lasted about seven or eight hours. When I woke up, you know, that, that evening, um, I had a new heart beating in my chest. They were able to first detect the hepatitis C virus in my blood, 
About four days after the transplant, I began then taking the antiviral drugs. Within a few weeks, the virus was gone, and since then, I've been virus-free. 20, 25 years from now, I believe we'll be able to take stem cells from people whose end organ disease is advancing and grow those stem cells and create basically like a designer organ for that person. Bioartificial organs, um, there's a number of different ways to create them. Basically, it's, a, it's, it's some type of scaffolding, and that can be completely artificial, or it could be an animal organ that's been decellularized, so the living parts of the organ are removed, and then you lay down on top of that scaffolding human cells and um, stem cells. I'm very focused on this issue of trying to improve organ transplantation and the availability of organs so that you know my kids and grandchildren will have this miracle available to them that I've had. I'm acutely aware that the clock is ticking and that we need to solve these problems. I'm one year out from my heart transplant and really able to do um, pretty much everything now and it's just a miracle and I feel better now than I have you know in 30 years I'm enjoying life um, every aspect of life and I'm living you know one day at a time I, I have plans this year actually to go back to Patagonia um, um, there's some people there who you know basically saved my life that I need to thank and also just to it's one of those beautiful places you know on the planet and I want to be back there again